Sunday, February 13th, 2022, installation of 2022 officers. Please wear all black if you have it. Monday, February 27th, 2022, Wings with a Twist will be serving dinner to all Golden Age members and members ages 74 and up. You must sign up on the sign-up sheet list if you're a family member in the age group that is a member of the church that would like food, they can also sign up on the list. The sign-up list are at the front door of the sanctuary and by the administration wings. Uh, Sunday, March 20th, 2022, Greater Liberty Baptist Church will celebrate 140 years. We will have our 140 year church anniversary. Taxation, each member 18 and over is asked for $140. Each ministry is asked to give $140. Youth 13 to 17 are asked to give $14. Children 12 and under, $1.40. Thank you, these are announcements. everyone. It's good to see everyone out today. I'm glad we have no accidents. Hope everybody's coming safely that's traveling on. But at this time, it is time to say we want to welcome all visitors and of course our family uh, here at Great Liberty. Thank you for coming on behalf of our pastor, Marcus D. Underwood Sr. and pulpit, clergy, and all members. We thank you for coming today. Be careful as you leave as well. God bless you. Hope that you hear the word, receive the word, and love each other and show it as we go. Thank you so very much, and have a blessed day. Amen. Amen. Amen.
5 through 8, and it reads as follows. Keep your life free from the love of money. Be satisfied with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you or abandon you. Therefore, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who have spoken God's word to you. As you carefully observe the outcome of their lives, imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. Pray for us. Heavenly Father, I want to come to you and say thank you for this day. This day you've allowed us to be a part of, Heavenly Father. We could have been anywhere this morning, Heavenly Father, but you saw fit to bring us to your house. So it's only right that we give you the praise and the glory. So, Father, we want to thank you for last night's laying down this morning's waking up. I want to thank you for all the families here on the town of Mount Boys. Uh, Heavenly Father, I ask that you would bless us one by one and name by name. Let's continue to keep us happy, Father. Heavenly Father, lift up our pastor to you with his family by his side. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would continue to keep him, uh, continue to fill him so that he may continue to feed us. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the children, Heavenly Father. Juveniles shooting police, uh, kids killing kids, Heavenly Father. We just ask that you would touch them. It's not too late for them, Heavenly Father. We know you can say it. Heavenly Father, I left up my, my wife to you, uh, my family, Heavenly Father. Just thank you for my family and all you've done for us. I'm not deserving, Heavenly Father, but you saw fit to give me such a great family, and I thank you for that. Father, I haven't always gotten it right, but you've always been yeah, right, Father. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I thank you for that, Father. I just want to lift up the, the families that have lost loved ones. And Father, we even want to lift up the ones that got good news. Yeah. Because it's all due to you, Heavenly Father. And we thank you. And Heavenly Father, as we go through this service this morning, we pray that your presence will be here. As it says, two or three gathered in your name, and I'll be in the midst. So we thank you for coming back regularly this morning, Heavenly Pray for our pastor as he brings the word today. Yeah. May someone hear something or see something here that you know, makes them come running and ask them what must I do to be saved. Because the book also tells us that you will leave the 99 and come for the one. I was that one, Lord, and I thank you. I thank you for keeping me down the I would just be with us today. We love you. We praise you. And we'll always give you the praise and the glory. These and other things I sing in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Songwriter said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know, I looked at that past the scripture this week, brothers and sisters, and that means every day you wake up, you ought to have thanking the Lord on your mind. Maybe somebody in here to ask me the question, and I could I could run down the road, as they say, and remind us all. He gave you breath in your life. He, he gave you food in your house. He gave you clothes. He gave you a roof over your head. He gave you everything that you need to survive in life. And then he blesses you with some of your wants. He gives you some of the things that you desire in your heart. Is there anybody in here that's glad to bless the Lord today? Is there anybody in here? I'm even showing up glad to bless the Lord. I'm not talking about getting one of those little kids that pray. But you're here to bless the Lord because he's been good to you in spite of you. Old oh, folks, it'd have been better than you, it'd have been than myself. That's the reason why the songwriter said, I, can, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let us pray. God, we thank you first of all for today. We thank you that you kept us this week. Matter of fact, Lord, we thank you that you keep us every day. Because if some of us wasn't kept by you, we wouldn't be kept at all. Matter of fact, Lord, I can remember a time when many of us who think we're doing it for ourselves all realize we can't do nothing without you. 
God, we thank you for being God all by yourself. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for preventing us from going to places that would have caused us harm. God, we thank you for this church. We thank you for each and every member, one by one and name by name. We, we pray, God, for those who are dealing with loss. We pray, oh God, for those who are still dealing with grief and the loss of family members and friends. But, but most of all, God, we thank you for the fact that you can give us what we need when you know we need it. We pray for the music ministry of this church. Keep blessing Brother Mitras and the choir. But God, I can't say it well enough. Keep blessing Brother Mitras and the choir. Keep causing the praise to come forth from them and cause everybody else to catch on fire. Because, Lord, if there ever was a time we need to catch on fire, praising your name for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy is right now. God, most of all, we pray for our pastor today. Strengthen the leader, guide him, give him what he stands in need of. But most of all, Lord, when he stands to declare the truth of your word, let it come with power. Let the words be with conviction. And cause someone to come crying, what must I do to be saved? Because, Lord, we know beyond the shadow of a doubt, we can't save ourselves. We know beyond the shadow of a doubt, God, that, that it was because of you that salvation is in place. And because of the grace that you should that you shed on us. We thank you for salvation. We pray for this worship experience today. We pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will through this place like you always do. Give us what we stand in need of. But most of all, let us be witnessing the power of God in this land, in this day, and this country. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand on our feet for our congregational hymn. I am on the battlefield. It has been with all three stanzas. Amen. Amen. So for those of you who don't have a program, this, this is one of the grand hymns of the church.
our mission is to reach the world abroad, teaching them the infallible gospel of God's grace through his darling Son, Jesus Christ, and the truth unto salvation. Amen. You may be seated.
feel this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But that's the Lord that is good. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To be in the house of the Lord. Yes, Lord. One more time. standing before you this morning. Thank God that he is faithful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That he is faithful. Thank God for his healing hand. I thank him for his provision. Thank him for his protection. I thank him. I'm flanking my household with your prayers, yeah. your thoughts, and your sentiments. Yeah. I thank God for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, send your love. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank our God, if we had a thousand dollars, we still couldn't thank him enough. But we glorify him this morning.
replicate this. You can't feel what I'm feeling right now. You got to be here. It's warm around here. Yeah. <laughs> 
Ephesians. You better do that. Chapter 1. All right. And verse 6. Praising you. Ephesians chapter yes, 1. Sir. Yes, sir. And verse 6. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Greg, I'm going to try not to be too long. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Greg said, you, been, you ain't preaching in two weeks. I don't know you. <laughs> I feel like preaching very All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> In verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. Amen. The praise of his grace. The praise of his grace. I actually have a subtitle of this one. The ultimate end of election. The ultimate end of election, which is the praise of his grace. Beloved, God not only warrants our praise, but he commands it. He not only warrants it, but he commands it. The psalmist said, praise ye the Lord. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. And then he ends that 150th song by saying, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Let everything not just human beings, yeah. dogs, and cats, and flies, and bees, and birds, and gerbils, and hamsters, and rats, and bulls, and goats, and fish, everything. Praise ye the Lord. The funny thing is, is even if there were no eyes, to behold him. Yeah. Even if there were no lips to sing his hymns of praise, he would still be infinitely glorious fully within himself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. In other words, God would praise himself yeah. and receive enough. Yeah. God will look at himself, take two steps back, and kiss himself two times. Yeah. And say, I'm a bad boy. Yeah. He is infinitely glorious all within himself. And yet, he chooses to exhibit his glory. Not only to creatures of creation, but he chooses to exhibit his glory in, his, to, in those created in his image and after his likeness. That he might get praise out of the hearts of men. The thing is, as it relates to this text, if we can, if we can render praise to God for the order beauty of creation how the sun lights our days how the moon and the stars lights our night times and how the mountains touch the sky and the vast oceans and rivers don't overtake the land how the clouds absorb the vapors from yesterday's rain to keep pouring for tomorrow's harvest 
How the bees pollinate the field so flowers will bloom season after season. If we can render praise to God for when the power of God manifests itself in the midst of our circumstances, how he heals sickness and disease and how he feeds the hungry and how he clothes the naked and how he protects the careless and provides for the have-nots and how he makes a way out of no way that we can render praise to God yeah. for all of that. I just wonder how much praise yeah. is due unto him yeah. for his exceeding richness in grace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can praise him for all those tangible things. If we can praise him for all that, how much praise is due unto his name? For grace unto salvation. How much praise should we be giving him for that? For he shouldn't be glorified for anything more so than the glory of his grace. I contend this morning that the visible church is falling short of rendering God the praise he deserves for his sovereign grace. Notice I said the visible church. But the visible church is falling short this morning. Beloved, make no mistake about it. I believe in my heart that the reason that the church is falling short is because of poor doctrine. It's because of poor doctrine. I need you to stay away from me this morning. For beloved praise and worship is given based on knowledge and understanding. I praise God for what I know God has done for me. I worship God for what I know and understand yeah. of who he is yeah. Yeah. in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Praise and worship is based on knowledge yeah. Yeah. and understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And until you truly grasp Ooh, that all of salvation, the whole of salvation, the means, the end, and everything in between. Until you grasp that all of that is all of God. You will continue to fall short of glorifying his name. Paul understood. Paul understood the importance of getting your doctrine right. child of God, regardless of what you may think, doctrine is important. Yeah. Yeah. Doctrine is important because you could be believing something yeah. that's not good doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. And then when life and circumstances happen, yeah, yeah. and the doctrine that you're standing on, on huh, is on shaky. Yeah. Yeah. Then your faith can be disturbed. Yeah. 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 Paul understood the importance of good doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. Especially as it pertains to salvation. He begins in verse 3 of chapter 1 by saying, Blessed the God and Father of our Lord Jesus the Christ. Who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings. He extols the divine grace of God toward them. To arouse their hearts. He's trying to pique their interest and arouse their gratitude. To set them ablaze for the grace of God. To an overflowing thought of thanksgiving. And you know, before he gave them the doctrine, he was saying, you ought to bless the name of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. You ought to just say, thank you, thank you. 
for first of all just being in position of having the privilege of calling him father of being his child, of being his son, being his daughter. That's a privilege. And he's saying, child of God, you need to just direct and orient your thought to a place of gratitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he goes on and he tells them that the design here, the design here by inserting the righteousness of divine grace he is inserting here that he, what he is doing is protecting them from perceiving in themselves anything good or meritorious to warrant salvation. I'm going to say that again. His design in the text is to protect them from perceiving in themselves anything good or meritorious to warrant salvation. Why would he do this? Why does he feel like this is necessary? It is in hopes of shielding them from having their faith shaken. It's in hopes of shielding them from not only having their faith shaken, but from having their calling doubted, from having their salvation doubted, or that salvation can be attained by any other method. Because the thing is this, if your doctrine is not sound, yes, sir. if you don't have a firm understanding and a firm belief in what you understand to be true in regards to salvation, then you can fall to anything. Yeah. You can fall to anything. You know, I... I, I Salvation, regardless of what you believe, salvation is not conditioned upon faith and repentance. Some of y'all confused. <laughs> salvation is not conditioned upon faith and repentance, but it's conditioned of God's sovereign grace and election. Faith and repentance is nothing but the result of one being regenerated of his soul. Oh, yeah. Beloved, faith and repentance is a result. It is an after effect. It is a consequence of one being born again. What am I saying? What I'm saying is, you don't have faith. You haven't been born again because you have faith. You have faith because you've been born again. Regeneration of the soul is the work of Jehovah. Didn't nobody decide to be born. No. I didn't choose my parents. Did you choose your own? I didn't choose to be born in 1978. I, I, I didn't choose. But the Lord chose for me. In the fullness of time when Marcus Underwood was going to enter the world. So since I never chose to be born the first time, is it not safe to say yes, sir. I had nothing to do with being born yes, the second time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This notion yes, that one is born again by an act of faith is a lie yes, from the pits of hell. But I've been born again, regenerated, and made quickened, and made alive by the Holy Spirit, and was told to sip from the cup of faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And in the day of his power, yes, I was made a believer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Beloved. 
Did Christ not tell Nicodemus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. In John 3. Come on. Except a man be born again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He cannot even see, let alone enter. Yes, sir. Into the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. Is that the Bible? Yes, sir. John chapter 3. Start at the beginning. Uh -huh. When a man named Nicodemus came to Jesus by that night. Yes, sir. Read it for yourself. He said, except a man be born again, regenerated, made anew. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I'm a brand new thing. Yeah. I know you look at me outside yeah. Yeah. and I look the same. Yeah. But what you don't know yeah. is I've got new parts on the inside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been deposited with a new hard drive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got a new operating system. Yes, sir. Because he gave me a new heart. Yes, sir. He took that old stony heart and yes, threw it in the trash. operating system and you upgrade the software. Yes, we got a new talk to yes, New walk to yes, New mind. Yes, new attitude. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, the box looks the same but it acts like a brand new computer. Yes, So 
It's because of election. Yeah. <laughs> Those that are saved today. Yeah. Those who have truly been born again, who have tasted and seen for themselves. Yeah. That the Lord is good. Yeah. And his mercy oh, is everlasting. Yeah. You're standing here today because of election. Yeah. Verse 4 tells us that he chose us. It says according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Yeah. Now I know, because see, there's a lot of pastors, there's a yeah. lot of preachers, a lot of teachers, a lot of theologians, a lot of Bible professors who don't like to touch this passage of scripture. But they know they got to give some kind of answer to it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you might have heard, they might have told you once or twice before because maybe you questioned it yourself a time or two in the past. And they told you that God looked down the realm of time and saw the good works that you would do. And therefore, he chose you for salvation. Beloved, I've been to school, and I can, you know, comprehend a little bit of what I read, but when I read verse 4, if I read the whole thing, it says that not only was I chosen, but I was chosen in him, and not only was I chosen in him, but I was chosen before the foundation of the world. That I would be what? Holy. Oh, yeah. without, without, and without blame. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I look at that text, the first thing I'm going to say is he said to refute that because Paul, you know, Paul was a smart fellow. <laughs> he always anticipated a rebuttal. And so Paul made sure that he wrote in here that it was before the foundation of the world. Yeah. Before Adam, yeah. before anything, yeah. before he said, let there be, the choosing already happened. Yeah. No one being born yet, yeah. you haven't done anything good or evil. Yeah. And just to back me up, I think Romans 9 and 11 says yeah. that, before, that even the children, yeah. Being not born, yeah. still in the mother's womb, yeah. neither having done good yeah. or evil, yeah. but for the purpose of election, yeah. might stay. Yeah. Jacob, I love. Yeah. Huh. Yes, sir. And Esau, yeah. I hate it. Yeah. Is that not the word of God? So not only if you go ahead and argue what's still that doesn't tell me that he didn't look throughout time and he could have solved some good in me. All right, if you want to say that, Paul went on and said that I was chosen in him. Yeah. Who is him? Yeah. That should be a capital H-I-M. Yeah. Yeah. Because the him yeah. is Jesus the Christ. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So if you want to say that he chose me out of something good. Yeah. It wasn't anything good that was found on my part. Yes, sir. But it was the good yes, sir. that was found in him. Yes, sir. My elder brother. Yes, sir. My high priest. Yes, sir. The great I am. Yes, That's who I was found. Yes, sir. Chosen in. Yes. And then he said, in case you get it twisted, yes. the holiness. Yes. The righteousness yeah. is a result yeah. of the choosing yeah. in Christ. Yeah. Because he said, 
I chose you before the foundation of the world yeah. in the goodness and the righteous work of my son. Yeah. So that what? So now, now. you can be holy oh, yeah. and, without and without blame. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Oh. Yes, sir. In other words, what are you saying to me? For those who got your halos on so tight. Yeah. Yeah. For those who think you deserve something. Yes, sir. For those who think you are warranted, God's good graces, a man of grace does not do in hopes to become something. Rather, a man of grace, he does because he already is. Yes, Ain't the Lord all right? Yeah. In other words, I don't do what I do because I'm trying my best yes, to make it in. Yes. But I do what I do yes, because I'm already a child of the King. Yeah. So I try my best to walk a little bit better. Yeah. I try my best to talk a little bit better. Yeah. I try my best to love you a little bit better. Both ways. 
Because if it be of grace, then it is no more works. And if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Yeah. Beloved, all was made possible by Jesus the Christ, yeah. who was the material cause of our election. The Bible says to the praise of his grace, to the praise of his own glory, everything was for his own purpose in glory. It wasn't to make you feel good. It wasn't to make you happy. It wasn't so you could say nice things, but it was for his own glory. And God gets glory out of his own purpose. God gets glory out of his own will. He tells us that he had made us accepted in the beloved. Beloved, we can praise him today for his glory and grace. Why do you say? Because he had made us accepted yes, sir. Yes, sir. in the beloved. Yes, he made you and I yes, low down dirty scoundrels, yes, stinking in the nostrils of God, yes, of filthy rags, yes, who have done nothing good, yes, for there's none righteous, yes, no, not one. Yes, but all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But somehow God still made us accepted in the beloved. If you can't praise God for doing that work, then you might as well stop putting on your Sunday dress. Stop putting on your good shoes. Stop putting your Sunday hat and driving to your churches but stay on home stay in your bed get a little more rest and quit giving God sweet nothings and lip service but God is looking for a church that can praise him Somebody, I'm a 
the color of blood. Yeah. Eyes like fire. Yeah. Hair is like sheep's wool. We shall see him. And we shall be changed and we shall be like him. Is anybody looking forward to that great day? Yeah. 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 When all the saints yeah. go marching in. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Brother Greg Smith if he will come and bless this table. Passover when the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world 
has already done the work. So we have the Lord's table that's taken the place of Passover. We do this in remembrance of him. The people of Israel, they celebrated Passover as his covenant people. But how the past, how the death angel passed through by. Not because of their heritage. Not because they were the children of Israel. But because of the blood. That's the only reason. It wasn't because of who they were affiliated with. It was because of the blood. And what that was was a foreshadow of what was to come in Christ Jesus. So now, the wrath of God will pass those over who have the blood stained over them. But not the blood of Goats, yes, sir. And sheep and well, well. But the blood of Christ Himself. Yes. Well, there is a fountain filled with blood yes, sir. Yes, sir. that was drawn from yes. Emmanuel's van. Yes, yes, and the Lord dipped me in it. And I came out white as snow. Without spot or wrinkle. That's why we serve the Lord's table. And we no longer acknowledge Passover. Christ fulfilled. He fulfilled that. So make sure you tune in to Bible study midweek. So you'll obtain an in-depth understanding of why those feast days are no longer necessary. Why we no longer hear trumpets on Sabbaths. We no longer hear trumpets with every new moon. It's a reason. It's a reason why Paul talked about the last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to get a better understanding of what all that means. Jesus. 
Bible said he took the bread and he blessed it yeah. and he broke it. He said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. And after the same manner, after they had sucked, he took the cup and he said, drink ye all of this for this is the New Testament in my blood. for her with you God is still able yes, he is. and God is a keeper yes, he is. he is a keeper of his people and he's keeping her even now beloved let us be in prayer for the family of Sister Joy and Perrin just got word that her grandson, Landon, was just killed. Oh. So we are keeping that family oh. in our prayers. You know, that's disturbing news to get today. Yes, sir. Such an uplifting fellowship. Yeah. But God is still on the throne. Yes, he is. 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 God is still on the throne. And in this season, he still knows what he is doing. Yes, So we're going to pray for that family. We're yes, going to lift them before the Lord here yes, sir. Trust that God is in control and that God will render comfort wherever they stand in need of it. Pray God will provide. For yes, sir. I know He will. Yes, sir. I know He will. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to also just bring to the attention of the body. Right now, over the last two, three weeks, we're doing a lot of work around the church. We're doing a lot of work is slated to get done to this building. Not only cosmetically, but you know, there's some things that got to be done with the bones of the building. Praise God, sister. Some folks say, don't do too much. We're moving. We ain't going to be here long. Amen. But we still got to take care of what we got. I have as much longer as God allows us to be here. We can't continue to have water damage. Those things got to be fixed because we know where there's water and stuff like that set in and it's unhealthy. So we are addressing those types of issues. And we're just doing some things so we can continue to be about our Father's business. 
Amen. Amen. But as we are doing those things, it is important that we continue to be good stewards. It is. Just because you go on to church at Bedside Baptist does not mean you are no longer obligated to render unto God what belongs to him. And I'm not saying this like I'm asking for your money. Uh, you've heard me say it before. Giving is for you. Yes, right. If you say that you're a child of the king, and yet you don't trust God with a dime out of your dollar, and yet you want God to pay your life bill, and you want God to give you a raise, and you want God to heal your disease. You want God to open up windows and pour you out blessings. But yet, you can't trust God with a dime out of a dollar. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Because we've been in the pandemic for two years, over two years. And God has sustained us. Don't, get, don't twist what I'm saying. We're not broke. We ain't getting things done because we're broke. But I do believe, I do believe, and I trust in my spirit that God has great things in store for 330 Chestnut Street. I believe that. I believe that. God is going to allow us, God is going to give us a platform that the city is not ready for. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. All I'm asking is trust God and his word and be faithful over a few and watch him make you a ruler over men. If we can just be faithful over what God has given us, treat it right, do right unto him and his kingdom, watch what God will do. Watch what God will do. We're doing a lot, like I told you. All the leaks is from the steeple to the back. It's getting fixed. That bathroom has been redone. The wall is being done. It's almost complete. Gutters all the way around the church is being redone. The plumbing back here is being redone. Is being redone. Furnaces are going to be redone. Now, y'all look and think about everything I just said. You add that up in your head. Everything I just said. You add that up in your head. People of God, be a good steward of what God has entrusted to you. And watch what God not only do in his house, but watch what he does in your house. Watch what he does with your house. And I'm only telling you what I know. I didn't get my first home. I didn't get my home until I started tithing. My bank account didn't stop going negative until I started tithing. My credit score didn't never get up there until I started tithing. And you, I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. If you just trust God, watch what he'll do. I promise you, I promise you, he can do more with the 90 than you can do with the whole 100. And not only will he take care of everything, but you'll have some savings. 
without giving you a raise. They don't want to believe me. I know they don't. I know you don't want to believe me. It's hard. It is. Tithing comes with growth. And I understand some of you just ain't grown up enough. Tithing comes with growth. And if you have a trouble tithing, the Lord said keep it in your body. Because he don't want you to give grudging or out of necessity. The Bible says he wants a hilarious giver, cheerful giver, who's giving out of the love of their heart. So if you can't do that, keep it in your body. Because you know why? You might as well keep it because the Lord ain't going to bless it anyway. So you might as well keep it and try to scrape as much as you can with it. <laughs> Do the best you can with it. Hallelujah. I'm good. But y'all know I don't talk about money. Because I don't care about your money. I trust the Lord. Yes, sir. Turn up. For our hearts and minds are clear. People of God be praying. Let us stand. As we have just finished the one series in Sunday school out of the book of Haggai, we will be transitioning to another series that Elder Dunn will be teaching. But he's not going to begin that on next Sunday. He's going to begin it on the third Sunday in February. The third Sunday in February. So next Sunday, we will not have Sunday school. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and all wise God, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for grace. We praise your name. We worship you in spirit and in truth to the glory, to the praise of the glory of your grace. Thank you for Jesus. Master, we lift our sick and our shut-in before you. We lift the family of Brother Landon before you. Comfort, Lord, as only you can. I pray, oh God, that out of this season that we've been going through, I pray that you be glorified. Something immaculate is on the horizon. It has to be. Because you are moving and working in such a mighty way yeah. that I just can't wait to see what the Lord has in store for his people. Amen. Father, now and unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the Father, the throne of grace, rest, rule, and abide with these thy people henceforth now and forevermore. Let every heart say, Amen. God bless you. God keep you. May his countenance continue to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Go in the name of Christ.